Right, my challenge is to make upma today. Uh, this is something which is very common in South India. So I've got one cup of rava stroke suji, whatever you want to call it, uh, semolina. That's what we call in this part of the world. Uh, my memories with upma is uh, grew up in a Punjabi household, but grew up in a metropolitan city. So it was uh, quite a common thing in our house. So back to the recipe. Uh, I didn't add any fat to it. Just you need to toast it gently. It takes about good three to four minutes, depending on the quantity. Okay. So you don't want to color the rava uh, or suji, uh, but you want to lightly toast it. Okay? So my rava is lightly toasted. If you look at it, it's a little bit darker, okay? And that goes on a plate. Keep that aside. And let's start with another pan, okay? Straight heat in. I'll keep this a little bit away. Now, uh, upma is something I think every household in India would know, right? It's such a common thing, but mostly in South India. And they would eat uh, as a breakfast, as a meal, uh, anything really. Uh, it's, it's can be a, it can be a snack. So I've started with sunflower oil. <clears throat> some people would, uh, excuse me, some people would use coconut oil instead as well. And I like to add a little bit of ghee as well. So the mixture of two is actually quite nice. It gives a beautiful flavor. And while the, my oil is getting hot, oil and ghee mixture, I just introduce you to my ingredients. You've seen the rubber. Uh, here I have uh, mixed vegetables, which is frozen. Uh, chana dal, urad dal, uh, onions, ginger and chili, cashew nut, lime, uh, we already used the ghee, mustard seed, and red chili, okay? So I'll add the lentils first because they take a little time to cook. And they need to be, they kind of give a nutty taste to it. So you can find, especially the chana lentils, you can find the toasted one these days. Uh, in the market, at least here in the UK. Very convenient, uh, especially when you are cooking for people who have kind of uh, diet restriction and they can't chew things properly. So you could use the roasted ones. But if you don't want to add it, don't add it. You could go for peanuts perhaps. And if you have the nuts allergy, then leave it all together. That would be my view, okay? So idea is to color them and as they get colored, then only I'll reach out for my mustard seeds and red chili. Now coming back to upma, uh, it, it is, as I said, it's, it's very commonly made in South India. I have seen more of it in uh, Tamil Nadu, Chennai would be the capital, and Karnataka. Those are the two regions I've seen more prevalent, more easier. People use them a lot more. Uh, I've added chana dal straight away, but you could soak it if you wish to. And if you soak it, it becomes a little bit softer. But I think I like the crunch, so I'll stick with it. Okay. Love the flavors that are coming out of the pan. Uh, the mixture of oil and ghee is actually quite nice. Uh, and what it does basically, it takes the smoking point slightly higher, but giving all the good qualities which you want out of ghee, the flavor, the richness, that's always required here. So now, as you can see, uh, dal is kind of getting a little darker. Uh, it, it is closer to what I need it to be. So I'll add the mustard seeds and keep the heat up. Okay, add this platter. Mm. 
smells like just just gorgeous okay i'm going to add the ginger and the chili uh green chili i love the flavor of green chili that goes in there's nothing um uh, hard and fast rule about it you know different people would make it very differently uh i'm sure i'll be challenged on what i'm doing uh, but it's okay that's that's the democracy that's the way we we'll live onion just chop everybody is allowed to have an opinion i guess now onions are kind of translucent and that's what i'm trying to achieve i'm not trying to achieve any color the frozen veggies or if you're using the fresh veggies just blanch them uh, it'll be easier so the carrot peas beans and corn that's what it is I've forgotten but not and those are curry leaves I should have gone with this that should have gone with the uh, mustard seeds but you know what at this stage also they are quite okay and I what I have in my house is frozen curry leaves I was thinking what I had forgotten something and there I saw a left a bowl in the side but it's okay curry leaves are quite strong pungent leaves they'll pick up the flavor straight away but if you could add with the mustard seeds I tell you the flavors are even better Ah, beautiful. Some people would argue that adding curry leaves right with the oil, uh, lentils and mustard seed is quite crucial. I would argue it is quite right. I simply forgot. Okay? So I I made made a mistake. I corrected it. No issues there. Cashew nuts can go in. that part of the world the south india grows a lot of cashew nuts so they are used to using a lot of cashew nuts i'll add the salt and obviously to taste i'm adding a lot of salt here but uh, because my spoon is not being able to pick a lot that's why but it's actually just about a teaspoon i have added okay and the hot water okay Let this come to a boil. Okay, the water is boiling quite vigorously. I'll remove this pan because I need some action here. <clears throat> I'll just lower the heat a bit and add semolina. Okay. Now, the job as a cook is to keep it stirring. you bring it down to medium heat the bubbles will get quite vigorous it's like a savory pudding for people if not of indian origin they're looking what it is a lot of people i've spoken to about semolina in in the uk they say oh we have got very bad memories of school dinners Uh, but trust me guys this is nothing like a school dinner this is way way better than anything you've tasted with semolina before this is won't get any better than this in my opinion i'll take a bit of spatula see how quickly it soaks up it's actually pretty much cooked in my opinion but i can just go on and cook it a bit more if i need to add a little bit of more water i can but to me it's quite fine i i like to keep it a little bit scrambled uh if you add a lot of oil then also it becomes a bit fatty uh, that's also not right but this seems quite nice to me okay so 
my food without a twist would be useless, right? So what I like to do is a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor, a little bit of flair to our classic Indian dishes, okay? So at this stage, I'll add a little bit of lime juice. And I've purposely chosen lime because I think lime goes really well. So does lemon, don't get me wrong, but it's just the personal preference. Okay, so as the pan is getting hot, just oil. this to be really hot I'll just go on that one because that's slightly bigger hob and I've kept this one going I could cook it for another three to five minutes but you know what the semolina was already cooked uh, then I sorted all the spices and the lentils and everything is nicely done so don't need any more really now what do you serve with this generally uh, in Indian households people would add ketchup believe it or not, or spicy ketchup or homemade tomato chutneys. So for me, um, both does it, to be honest, uh, but I love making different types of chutneys at home. Uh, and I shared a recipe this few days earlier on my Insta. It's there, if you want to follow that one. Now I had some purple broccoli, which I brought from uh, my restaurant. I just want to kind of caramelize it. This is almost like uh, starting it, to be honest. If you had the barbecue going, you would start it on the barbecue, uh, but here in a hot pan would do the job. Okay, you already see the color is troubling up and the smell out of the pan is just beautiful. Really nice. Okay, I, I would want to char it on all the sides before I would go and change it. I'll use a spoon. I'm home with a spoon to be honest. Yeah, but look at that. That's what I'm looking for. Take the pan. So there's the stems of broccoli. It's like a tender stem broccoli, uh, but just purple in color. Uh, you could blanch it if you wish to, but I think just keeping it the right heat and letting it charred nicely does the job. And it looks so beautiful on top of the upma. Okay. And this is bang in season now. Uh, there's plenty, loads of it that was available here, at least in the UK. Uh, people watching in India and elsewhere, I'm sure you can find asparagus. Asparagus would go really well. I would use the stems of asparagus in here. Okay, now the spices. Uh, just lower the heat and I would add salt, a little bit of red chili and a little bit of mango powder, okay? And that does it for me. Done. Okay, so let's serve. So let's serve now. So I'm just gonna pan the camera right on the plate. I'll bring the plate a little bit closer if possible. Okay, so this is done. I've eaten this with coconut chutney also, guys, when I lived in South India. I studied in Chennai, and this used to be one of the breakfast items on the mess. I was so sick of eating upma every day. I used to refuse to get out of the bed, especially on Sunday, if I come to know that they are serving upma, I would not wake up. So, okay, I'm, I'm better off in bed than going anywhere else. Okay, so just pile it up on top. There's no rule to it. Just want this to look amazing. I tell you what, this is going to taste delicious. It's one of my favorite veggies as well. I love this. There you go. So um, Mrs. Kocher likes to add peanuts to this recipe. So I better keep her happy. <coughs> It's not always me, right? So that can go a little bit. I think it's a little overkill. Uh, 
But you know what? I live in this house. I have to follow the rules. So you guys go on and enjoy this. It's a really lovely recipe. Uh, you can make it the way you like it, okay? Uh, I'll just turn this around to show you that how I've just piled it. Enjoy. Uh, really simple recipe. Good one for everybody in the family.